If you've watched our Kubota BX versus 1025R comparison, one area where the BX soundly defeated the 1025R was in the area of hydraulic connection for the loader. Kubota introduced probably a couple of years ago a nice single point connector that allowed a user to quickly disconnect the loader hydraulics, connect them up, almost effortless. Uh, and today, Deere has introduced same feature, similar feature. Um, we're going to install that on this machine and we'll see how it works. I'm going to reverse things a little bit in this episode. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm also going to talk about it, just give you some of my opinions, um, just show you some more details, then we'll get into the install. Hopefully we can save you some time. You won't have to watch the whole episode if you don't really care about the installation. The approach is pretty simple. We replace four hoses on the loader. Uh, we put the single point right here on a new cast bracket and we have four more hoses down to the existing quick disconnects. This allows you to use those quick disconnects down there. If you have another attachment that you want to use the SCVs for, you still can unhook it down there and hook up an SCV. You don't have to buy the top half again for that. Uh, that's an advantage. So it would probably be worthwhile for me to compare this to the quick connect on the Kubota BX. Uh, the biggest comparison that I would just have to state up front is that it's included, it's standard on the BX80 series or the 23S, whereas here it costs well over $800. That's obviously a big difference and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't point that out. Now, as far as the quality, this one is significantly stronger looking and stronger feeling than the single point connector on the BX. Uh, I got a distinct feeling when I was using the BX that the, the lever was a little bit flimsy. Um, the, just overall, the, the way it, it connected up was a little bit flimsy. We've seen a lot of leaks reported on the forums. We had one ourselves on the BX that we had here for comparison. This is the faster brand connector, the same one that Deere uses across all of its big machine lines. It's a little different design. It's a straight line design uh, like the BX use, but it, uh, it is the faster brand and it's, it, it really looks solid. This is quarter inch steel. This is really thick steel, like half inch steel on both sides. What do you think, Mary? Do you think it's gonna work? Um, overall, I'm very impressed. Very impressed with how they protected the hoses and it works phenomenally. The lever uh, on a lot of the other fasters is a push in lever. On the BX, it's a pull out, I believe. Um, but this one is pull towards you. For my hands, this works perfectly. I can hook it with my finger, okay? And then I can just quickly do this. I give it a couple of wiggles, comes right on out. You can get yours at greenpartstore.com. Uh, greenpartstore.com slash TTWT. We'll have it right there on that page with all the products that we have featured uh, since we've been partnering with Green Parts Store. Uh, you get free shipping uh, with that approach. They will include the instructions. The instructions were easy to, to go by. I only had a couple of issues. And if you watch the rest of this video following, well, you won't have those same issues. Okay, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. If you're interested in the install, keep watching. I know YouTube doesn't like this. They're probably gonna be upset and not promote this video because you didn't watch all of it. But if you're not interested in the installation, Skip right on to the end, you'll see it in action. If you are interested in the installation, we don't spend too long at it because it's really pretty simple. Stay with us. Let's start out by looking at the parts list and discussing the overall approach that we're gonna be using. Uh, there are eight hoses, uh, four hoses that are gonna go on the tractor and four hoses that are gonna go on the loader. I'm actually not sure which set or which. This is a big bracket that's gonna go on the tractor to hold the, the single point. Several bolts, several fittings, the single point connector itself, uh, this idea of colored zip ties to be able to identify which hoses are which. I've already tied a few on there. Obviously I need to cut off the extras, but that kind of shows you how those are gonna work. 
This also explains why it's a little more expensive than we expected. There's a lot of, of connectors and a lot of hoses here. Hoses, hydraulic hoses I found are very expensive. Uh, I wish they weren't so high. Uh, I know that you can get individual hoses at discounthydraulichose.com slash TTWT. Get a 5% discount if you use code TTWT. But even then, they're not cheap. And uh, so this one's got eight hoses. Uh, these quick disconnects are not cheap either. Overall, this kit is over $800. It's more expensive than what I'd hoped it would be. But from our experience, especially with Christie's small hands, uh, we found this to be worth the money uh, for us. More, otherwise, Christie really can't take the loader off. We'll have to look at the instructions, see how this goes together. But overall, it doesn't look too difficult. These are going to be tight, and they have to be. We'll have to torque them back when we're done because these have to hold a lot of weight. We're lucky if we can get them to come loose without a backing wrench. Yeah, this is the main loader mast, so it has to hold an enormous amount of weight. I had the loader mast come loose on my 2038R. So it's something we have to be very careful with. Make sure we get tightened back up where we want to go. So we'll take out these three bolts. They've actually given us longer replacement bolts. Now this middle one is held by some sort of a line in there. I've got to figure out how to fish that out. There it goes. It's interesting how rusty those bolts already are. This tractor was built in 2019, but it only had one hour on it. So it was a, it's still a brand new tractor when I got it uh, in early June. So it had set outside probably for all that time. And so there we go. Now, we've got these new longer bolts. Um, we can't get those back in from the inside because they're longer, I presume, but it showed the old ones sticking out like this, but it shows the new ones in the picture and the instructions being put in that way. So let's see what we can do there. Now if you're working on a 2025R, this mounting is slightly different. So there's a separate instruction page for the 2025R, I believe only for this step. Now, I think the hardest nut to get started is going to be that top one, so I'm going to try to do it. We want a washer and a nut on the inside there. What do you think, Mary? Are you going to help or are you probably going to climb out on my head, aren't you? No? Now, a lot of you guys will have an easier time of this than me because I've got this third function set of quick couplers right here in the way. I cannot reach down from the top because of them. Ah, but I can reach up in there pretty easily. Yeah, I'm reaching all the way up to that top bolt. Put the nut on it from the inside. You know, I, I think I'm just going to take this side section off. I, I don't know that I really need to, but it might give me a little better access. So, I mean, that is so trivial to do that it's silly not to, to take that action. And maybe that will allow my hand to reach down in here from the top. Oh, yeah, a little bit better. I still don't think you'll be able to see the backside with a camera, but at least I'll be able to get my hand and maybe a wrench back in there. Now you don't really want to try to tighten things up until you get all the bolts in. That's a standard rule of any sort of installation. Okay, bolt, flat washer, flat washer, and nut. Maybe if I take this third function loose, it's got steel hard lines to it, so it won't have a lot of flex, but maybe, maybe that'll give me enough room to get a wrench in there. And I may need to take the nut off of this top one. Just take the top one out entirely. That's what I'll do. All 
I really need to get them all in there and torque them all at the same time, but I just don't know how I can get a backer wrench on that middle one. So I'm going to torque it before I put the third bolt in. I know that's not really proper, but that's what I'm going to do. 223 foot-pounds. That's pretty specific. Yeah, it is. 223 right there. I'd rather put the socket on the nut side and torque it that way, but I don't really have much way to accomplish that. So we got the bracket on and all torqued. Oh, also it came with this little rubber protection dealy. I don't know what that's really called, but I was able to slide that right over here. It doesn't really stick down, but it kind of binds itself down and it works really well. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, the next step is to put these fittings in. Now it appears these kind of freely rotate in here, but uh, and these are O-ring fittings right there. See the O-ring? So we need to get them tight, but not as tight as we would have to get, say, a pipe thread fitting. So the O-ring is actually going to do the seal. So uh, a, a, a pipe thread or an MPT threading is uh, something we have to tighten much tighter. I'm trying to act as your vice, but... You've been my vice for years, honey. <laughs> Usually a vice is a bad thing. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it? Except <laughs> when it needs to hold something. Okay. You've held me together for years. That's what I meant. Oh. Yeah. Quick thinking. Yeah. You know, when you're working wrench to wrench like this, the way you can get the most strength when you're tightening is to put the wrenches almost together like this and then you can squeeze your hands together and that's how you get the most strength. It might seem a little unorthodox but when the wrenches are really close you can squeeze your hands like that and you get a lot of strength trying to tighten. Okay, so this is the tractor half. That's the way the, cup, the covers came on it. So I'm hoping they came on the right color. I'll double check that by reading it, but I've tried to maintain those covers on the same plugs just to, to make sure they're right. Okay, it says red, then blue, then black, then yellow. I will read that again to be sure, and then we'll put the matching hoses on. Okay, before you screw these hoses on, the instructions don't tell you this, and so I'm on my second try but I'll splice it in. You know how we can do that with the magic of video? Make sure you put these little protectors, the wrapped ends around these hoses before you put them on. Okay, we're getting started here. I'm going to, well, I think I'll go ahead and tighten them while I'm here. You gonna help me hold again? Sure. I need to get a better vise. I've got a vise on the other side of the shed, but it doesn't work very well. Are you saying I'm not doing a good job? Well, maybe I don't need a new vise. I've got you. Hmm. Okay, so it's... this is a flat face connector. So according to the literature that I read, the flat face O-ring face seal, O-R-F-S is what this is called. And according to the literature, it's supposed to be the single best sealing approach possible. Wow. I think in some cases that's true, and in some cases where there's a strain on the hose, uh, a natural strain, maybe it's being pulled by something, I think it makes it even harder to seal. So I'm not, okay. I'm not sure that that's always the case, it's just based on our experience. We've had some trouble keeping these sealed on certain scenarios. But other scenarios, you know, no problem at all. I notice when we use deer components, uh, when deer sends us a kit, it will have either O-ring face seal, O-R-F-S, or O-ring boss, um, which is what this other one was. It'll have these nicer fittings. When we get uh, fittings from a, a, a typical OEM, you know, they, they, 
they will use the national pipe thread, which is the lower quality fitting, has to be tight and tighter, is more likely to leak. Okay. So in other words, this is probably one reason it costs a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, these fittings are probably a little bit more expensive and, you know, it's just a little higher quality. People say sometimes that it's only the green paint. Well, I'm, I'm sure that the green paint costs more. I'm sure that there's an aspect of that that is green paint, but there's also differences. And maybe they're subtle and maybe they may never affect you, I don't know. But certainly you can see the differences in something like this when you, when you actually get it. Somewhere an engineer has decided this is better. Yeah, it's worth the extra cost. We're just gonna do it this way to try to, to, try to reduce the, the leakage. That's that step. So this is the tractor side. The next step is gonna to be to mount this on the tractor, this part up here. And then I think we put the couplers on this end. We'll see how it goes. So we'll just put this right on here, hopefully, just like this. be fine on that. One of the four, the blue hose, needs this orifice on it. They send you the orifice. They said this is for lift extend. So I wonder if it slows down the lift a little bit. Maybe it puts a little bit of a restriction. Let me take it back off again and see if it's a little bit small. Yeah, it's just a little bit smaller. The orifice here um, restricts the flow just a little bit so that it lifts slower. That's the only explanation that I've got because it said this is for the lift extend. So we'll put it on here. I suppose if I didn't put it on, it would lift faster. But I don't know that I want it lifting faster, especially when I have the forks on. I, I really want it to move slower and more steady for me. And I'm sure that's exactly what they've got in mind. Now, this is not new with the single point. I'm sure there's an orifice on the uh, uh, existing loader hose. I'll go check in a second. Sure enough, the blue hose here, or the hose with the blue ring on it, has an orifice just like the other one. So that's gonna slow down the lift extension. Interesting. These caps that are on the uh, inside of these quick couplers, and I had them on the underside of the uh, single point too, they're, they're hard to get out, the internal ones. The external ones aren't so bad, but oh, I think I'm getting onto it. Nice though, it keeps the dirt from getting in there. Yeah, and then of course I set them right back down in the dirt. Mm. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Now some folks might ask about using Teflon tape or other pipe seal. Well, you don't have to when you've got the O-ring. Any type of O-ring seal, either the O-ring face seal, ORFS, or the O-ring Bosch, you don't have to use any sort of uh, sealant to pre prevent leaking the uh, O-ring itself does that. Squeeze those wrenches together. That'll be plenty tight. Okay, the rest of them are straightforward. We just put the quick coupler right on the end. I put these couplers all on now, and then I was just kind of experimenting with plugging them in. I haven't actually plugged them in yet, but I was kind of experimenting, and I realized that I didn't have them rotated properly. So now I've got to go back and loosen them up to rotate them. So one thing I would suggest is you just not tighten these till you get the couplers on and then make sure you get it so that it you know works in a in a good direction that's that's going to work for you, right? And then you can tighten it up cuz you can swivel it a little bit. Well, you can, you've got full uh, ability to swivel it until you tighten this. And then once you get it tight, it won't swivel anymore. Now these are going to stay on the tractor, so you don't have to worry about having extra length. You actually just want them where they'll be most out of the way, because they'll be on the tractor all the time. Um, they won't come off with the loader. Now we're going to remove these four hoses from the loader. So we'll disconnect them right here at the hard lines. We're going to replace them with shorter hoses. Uh, the, the two additional hoses for the third function, that's going to be separate. That's kind of a sad part of this single function kit is it's still not single function if you have the third function valve. 
So I have to plug those in manually. Um, I don't think they have one yet that has six ports on it. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Good time to have some shop towels around because these leak Ooh, it's as you loosen them. Yeah, I know it. Look at that, the bucket's lowering too. I don't really know. I guess I should get a bucket under it because it's squirting out a bunch of stuff. I made the mistake of thinking that some shop towels would be enough here, but they are not. I loosened this yellow line and oil just poured out of it. Pretty much any time you're going to work on hydraulics, you need to be prepared for oil everywhere. Yeah, I know you didn't see any there. That's because it already drained a quart. Not quite a quart, but it already drained a bunch on our floor. Now let's hope this comes off without falling down. We made sure that we lifted our uh, loader up till the latch is closed, so it should be balanced such that it doesn't have to lose all the oil and end up flat on the ground. Now these hoses will be full of oil. Thankfully we've got the quick disconnects on the other end. So take them to some place where you don't mind oil and turn them over and allow that oil to drain out of them. Okay, before we attach these flat face couplers, I'm going to slide these outer hose protectors around them. Now this is yet another example of me doing it wrong the first time. But through the miracle of editing, Christy's able to fix it. So when you actually see us put these flat face connectors on, you won't see these at this outer layer of hose protector. Right? So hopefully you won't have to do it twice. This is another area where a, a, a deer supplied kit just kind of goes above and beyond. Uh, these hoses, there, there's the there's the internal hoses, and then there's this, this nice covering here, right? And then this is a third level of, of covering to try to protect them from, from whatever they might encounter. There's really nothing to this. We're just going to put these new hoses back on the very same way, match up the colors, red to red. Hopefully you, you had the zip ties on. If not, the top one is yellow, then black, then blue, then red. Okay, again, these are the O-ring face seal type connectors. They don't have to be crazy tight. And it's a good thing because the way this hard line is made, you could, you could twist that line if you got too serious with it. So the main thing is to decide your angle before you tighten. In that case, I didn't get the angle perfect, so I'm gonna have to loosen. Bring it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to unplug these again. I didn't realize how the next step went. You notice mine still work really well when they're new. Uh, even on my one-year-old tractor, there had been so much dust built up in those couplers that they didn't work very good. Had a video with Nolan here a few weeks ago, and you could see how I had to take my pliers to pull the outside ring back on at least one of the couplers. So they sometimes don't work as well when they're older. If they all work just like that, going in and out, we wouldn't have any need for the single point. Back to the install. So the next step here is actually to put these fittings on here. And the way they suggested doing that was actually to go ahead and mount this. That's why I unplugged them, is because I didn't want to open them up. As soon as I did that, that would, that would open up and potentially allow oil to come out of here. So I unplugged them. Now we'll take these little caps off. They had us connect the top half of the coupler here just to give us a, a, a nice easy place to put these fittings in. So I didn't need a vise this time, Christy. Yeah, I'm useless now. Uh, I guess so. Now I don't know which way I want them facing yet. That's one challenge that I have here. I think I may experiment here. Will I be able to rotate them? I don't know. I don't know that I will be able to rotate them. I'm going to assume I want them forward. We may have to change that. The first one here is yellow. 
What's next, Christy? Black. Black, okay. Hey, she's cheating. She's looking over at the tractor. That's not cheating. That's being smart. Yeah, it is being smart. Are we saying that cheating is sometimes being smart? No, I don't think that's what you're saying. Okay, now what's next? Yellow, black? Blue. Blue. I'm going to guess red is the next one. Yeah, that only leaves red, so. Oh, okay. Good guess. So it'll be something like that. Now I've got to tighten those up. One more step here, Christy. Yay. I think I'm going to like this bracket if I effectively understand what it's used for. I don't have such a bracket on Johnny 2's loader or on Johnny 5's loader. Let me see in just a second if it's used for what I think it's used for. Whoops. Careful, you may wake the cats up. Oh, they're all right. They can <laughs> sleep after we're done. Actually, I think they can sleep right through us. Okay, here we go. I like it. There is one weakness, one glaring weakness with this as well as with the BX single point, and that is that when you get a third function on the machine, it's not included. This only accepts four hoses. Likewise, the BX one only accepts four hoses. That leaves me with the two hoses for the third function that I still have to plug in with the same quick disconnects. Uh, maybe they can eventually come up with a six uh, hose version. That would be fabulous. But for now, this is what you've got. Some of you may be thinking, almost $900, how can this possibly be worth it? There's only four hoses to unhook. So I want to take a minute just to describe how I think this would be positioned and who I think it's most useful for. If you don't take your loader off maybe once a year or maybe never, well, you don't need this. But if you're using your tractor as a multi-purpose tool, oftentimes we call it as the ultimate transformer toy, and maybe you're not as young as you used to be and your hands aren't quite as strong as they used to be, or maybe you're a lady and you just don't have strong hands, uh, this can really save you a lot of effort. It's easy to handle. It's easy to do. You don't get yourself greasy. Um, it really is a joy to take the loader off and put it back on with this particular single point. So before you go making that comment that it's not useful, it's way too expensive, remember that for some viewers it may be the perfect accessory. I know it's something we've looked at for a long time. We've really wanted to get a scenario where Christy would be able to dismount and mount the loader. She just couldn't do it. There was no way she could push those rings back. So this is really gonna help. It works really well. Very happy with the unit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's an easy install. It really didn't take that long at all. It took us more time because we were, well, doing video and had to do a couple things twice. Things that you won't have to do twice because I showed you how to fix that. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.